Hi, it's me. Been a while since uh, my voice has been on here. It looks like my audio might be peaking. I do apologize. I'll try and move my mic away from my face, see if that helps. Uh, we are in Tabletop Sim. And the reason we are in Tabletop Sim is that I've been working on a board game. And uh, I wanted to give a little showcase for it. Uh, it's not done yet. I've only ever played it with two players max, myself and two other people, but at at different times. So me and one other person and me and another person. So I don't know if it's really fun. They said they enjoyed it, but they could have been being nice because they were my friends. Is this guy right here? I don't know. Uh, this is the... Oh, I don't have the updated PDF in here. I've only made a few changes to the PDF, and also the PDF isn't super accurate. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to pause this and upload the, the right PDF before we really get into this. There'll be a jump cut right here. Hold up. Um, I don't think it's actually capturing things, so I might have to do a screen capture of this. So give me a second, so I guess you guys didn't see anything. So let me go over to my capture and change this to a display capture. Okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Well, there you know. Now you know what I'm using. Ha ha. Actually, you've probably always known. There it is. Yeah, I have to do a actual display capture instead of window capture, because window capture apparently only captures the stuff behind it but see here it is here we are um all this fun stuff i hope you guys have a good, pretty good screen so i think i just uh fixed oh, let me do this so i can get a nice big there we go so uh don't isn't there a pop out yeah pop out okay here we go so um i'm just gonna flip through these really quick uh so you know you guys have to pause and see um uh, how to rip me off of my concept. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so, uh, real layman's term. These are just, you know, like a vague version of the specific rules. But, um, you're, you're hunting a monster, you're chasing a monster. Um, you start off the game by... Well, first off, you select a character, and you can put this pretty much anywhere. The ideal, in my con, in my idea, is like. Hold up, I'll just show you. Not the ideal, but like kind of the way I've always played it, is that, is that you can only go like. So oh, you can only go. Uh, sort of four away, because that's how many tiles actually exist. Right? So this space here, which is why, oh, you guys, I guess you guys didn't see that, but if you go like this and I show you, you can see here's a previous version of it. And it's on a, it's just on that, like, that was a nice size. I also feel like that's like, kind of like the right amount of tiles, you know? But you can pretty much put it anywhere in the play space. The idea is for the play space to be sort of roughly two feet by two feet um and there's only enough tiles to make that that shape there but you can make it in any shape i guess um <clears throat> but you start off by i guess choosing a character first and we got all these characters right here here's all our characters cards um was it spread was it oh how do i uh spread there's no quick button for spread there is for shuffle, yeah, shuffle, but there's no quick one for spread, huh? So I guess I'll just, oh, because I didn't grab them all, that's why. So, spread. So, you got these different characters. Uh, so I will say this character and this character were made only recently. The game was originally designed around these four main concepts, so they've been tweaked while playing, while sort of alpha testing with those two other players that I was playing with. Um, we've got uh, James Bowman, Dr. Gloria Housen, Carl Smith, Frank Penders, Kevin Doritz, and Deputy Dave Roberts. Now, all these images you'll see are obviously just stand-ins. Um, though I do like... I did make these using, um, like 
D and D assets that I had purchased, except for like that little car in that trailer, obviously. But like, like the trees and stuff. Uh, some of these I didn't purchase because they just I couldn't find any to purchase. But I tried purchasing these. But I like like the forest and the clearings that I've got going on. Um, but um, these are all just stand-ins, like kind of like give you an idea of what I'm going for, like the feeling. The original character I first made was her. And she previously was the weakest character. But now we've got Kevin, who's kind of the weakest character. Uh, but he's uh, pretty good at gaining information and staying alive. So she'll die really quick. So I tried playing the game with him last time. Uh, j by myself. And I died because I got greedy trying to face the, the creature. Um, and then I've got... The, the deputy who was added in... So these two were kind of designed as, like, support classes. He's kind of like your... Almost like your tank class. He's like your DPS. And he's kind of a step between DPS and the scientist. Um, so you choose your character. Um, sorry, I got a text message. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry about that. Um, so I... Not sure. I might just f sort of proverbial flip a coin. So this will be number six, which should be the deputy. Zero will be six. And then I'll just roll this to figure out who I'm going to play. I'll play five. One, two, three, four, five. I'll play the hunter. I'll scoop these guys up. Oh, my cat destroys my bed with her claws. So I'm sure you can hear because my mic seems to be extra sensitive. All right. Um... So I'll play the hunter. Here's the board. Again, this is just a stand-in board to make do. And I'll explain all this here in a second. So you choose your character. You'd place the HQ wherever the players agree on. You'd place uh, the HQ's health. Now this sounds more complicated than this. I like to just lock this. But um, it sounds more complicated than it actually is. And that's been the case with all the people I've played with. Uh, so basically once you go through a turn or two, it like just from, it just makes sense. And they seem to agree with my assessment when it comes to that. Um, so the idea is that, um, that you're hunting a monster. So right now I've only really got the, uh, the, the Windigo. All these cards are set up for the Windigo, but I am currently testing the, um, the werewolf. Uh, I just haven't made any updated cards. And I don't know why. I think it's just because, like, I did it wrong or something. But this is supposed to be... Both of these are supposed to have... As you can see with the little... Um, what do you call it? The preview of where it's going to land. The center is supposed to be clear and the center is supposed to be clear here. But it just isn't. Um, I'm rambling a little bit. Um... So these are uh, corpse cards. They are they correspond to every player character, but they don't mention by name. So like, the reason why is I'm considering putting in a legacy function where like, if a character didn't die, they can be played in in the next game or the against the next monster or whatever in the legacy version. Um, so you can lose the old man, but it's not. Uh, Frank Penders that you actually lose, right? It's just the old man, right? You know, oh, he seemed really nice even when he was being surly, right? It's not the same guy. Uh, but, however, if you do die, there is one that... Uh, see, the scientist, the muscles, right? So I'm playing the hunter. Oop, I'm done. There it is. So if I die, so this goes sort of into my hand, but not really. It goes like with me right it goes with i'm not even on this guy's team hold up let me change team same color um it goes kind of with me sometimes you can just kind of put it in your hand i guess but this is uh represents uh uh you right this represents your character's life it's basically it's tied to this guy right here all right now what you can do is any character you're not playing you can elect to put their corpse card into the discoveries and the reason why is that you would gain <coughs> when discovering their corpse sorry when discovering their corpse you would gain whatever's on here so you lose one health 
but you gain two knowledge, you gain two trap tokens, right? And some of these can be, oops, some of these can be really good. So like the dep, so uh, that's not very great. Oh, the well, I've got the one right here. <laughs> Lose one time, gain four ammo in the semiotic weapon or the bandolier, right? Um, so there's there's values to doing that, but when doing that it increases this. So for every corpse card you put in, it increases it by one. Uh, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, right here, use an eight-sided die for activity. Uh, when it, when the Windigo takes three damage in a single encounter, it increases by one. Anytime a corpse card is placed in the discovery pile, so that's when you're putting it in there, or another player dies. Um, uh, anytime a corpse is found, so anytime you also find when its activity goes up. Um, it decreases any time it loses vitality from a trap token or any time a player gains knowledge from a sensor token. Um, so this basically just affects how often um, you encounter the creature, and I'll explain that as we go along. Yeah, you, you agree... What is it? I'll just read off the fucking rules here. Oh, my pardon. Pardon my French. Players choose which characters they wish to play. Monster starts with 10 vitality. Now, I, I haven't decided whether it's the monster just gets a flat 5 or if they roll. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence about that. Each player rolls their character vitality counter as a result and adds it to the monster's vitality. So, I think it should be just a flat 5. So, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, so you'd max of 30 hit points for the monster, which is just, originally was its health just flat. But... Um, it turned out to be too hard for one player because it's supposed to be that you're supposed to win about as often as you lose, which I know doesn't sound like a fun game, but there's strategies and you can develop ways to sort of um, not gain the system, but there's there's ways to hedge randomness in your favor, and there's definitely strong metas um, depending on who you play, and each character has their value. So if you're playing by yourself, you know... Um, there's certain advantages to, to doing that. So an action die is the white dice here. So he gets a 10. So I'm pretty sure... Yeah, there you go. I'm pretty sure the top one is 10. Uh, he gets... Uh, sorry, wrong one. He gets uh, 9 vitality. So... Okay, that's the 12. He only needs the 10-sided one. Next one's 10. There we go. So he, he's got... Uh, Is there only is there is this the double zero one? Yeah, this is double zero. So this is actually for the scientist. I really need to label these. My apologies. Yeah, it's a double zero one as well. Double zero. Wait. Oh no, I might not have updated dice. Well, now I just look like an idiot. So let me just... Um, so I'll just grab one of these and use it. Because I believe it's 11 through 12, and I'll just do that one. But I've been focusing more on... Um, on the gameplay mechanics and all the resources being correct. And it hasn't really been an issue. Oh, he's got 9. I guess I... I guess I'm just dumb. So, he starts off with 4 stamina, 9, 2 food. So, I don't know why that one's on the wrong one. He's got 2 food, 2 material, 2 ammo. So, the idea was actually built around the hunter and the scientist were the two, like, sort of starting places for this, um, for this, uh game you might say so sidearm you may have two weapons so anything in brackets is an action so this is both a passive and an action for him he can have two weapons equipped and he can use an action to move one weapon um to the active slot he starts with the bow the bow is a pretty strong equipment card it's like the shortest word in here all right i'm blind i'm blind i'm blind i am so blind looked over there it is bow so he starts with the bow does it say equipped yeah, equipped. So we'll flip that guy, close it out. So the bow is pretty handy, as in you spend material rather than ammo, and it does the same amount as a handgun. So, I mean, it's pretty good. 
Um, and then uh, resourceful. Anytime you gain ammo, you gain twice as much ammo. So anytime you get, it says receive one ammo, you get two ammo. Um, if you get like the bandolier, like from his uh, car that says weapon or bandolier, that basically just allows you to use this extra slot um, as as a secondary ammo counter. So it'd be like like that. Like that, um, though I it also it doesn't work exactly that way because the scientist she she gets two knowledge counters to start off with. So, um, so there's that, <clears throat> and then we've got set the HQ's health to eight, set the knights to zero, play agree. To place the HQ tile, players place their pawns in the HQ tile, drive through equipment cards each. So we've done that. Eight, knights zero, health eight. We take our pawn, we'll put it here, and then we will draw three equipment cards. Uh, let me put this somewhere so it's out of my way. Uh, flashlight, knife, and trekking pole. All these are a pretty strong start. Knife is pretty decent, only if you know you're going to get an encounter. John Bowman, he really benefits from, from stamina because he starts with five stamina and then you can get a trekking pole. He can have, I believe, three equipment cards too. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, he starts, he can strong back one additional equipment card. So he can have a trekking pole, hiking boots, which gives him uh, seven stamina and then the knife. So he can be really useful with the me melee weapons. And like I was saying, you can do like these wombo combo builds of, uh, of, of, build outs sorry i'm a bit rambly right now um so yeah you set starting position to that draw three equipment cards rounds players choose any one to start players rotate to the left of the first player any amount of actions can be taken on a player's turn players can pass to the next player even if they have stamina left this round doesn't end until everybody runs out of stamina so stamina is basically how many actions you get in a turn um and then all the actions you get are right down here you can so I'm just going to read them off because Nightfall, I'll just go by basically what will happen. Requires one stamina unless it asks for more. You can do actions. So I was saying like switch to the sidearm is an action. So you can switch which weapon you have equipped as the uh, hunter. Uh, you may uh, draw and place a clearing or forest tile in an adjacent or empty space. Uh, you can call, it calls it scouting. Uh, you can move to an adjacent space. That's move. A uh, player may draw an equipment card. It's a max of five cards. Uh, a player okay, a player may take place a token, that is a sensor token, a trap token, food token, material, or ammo token onto the space they occupy. You can only have one token on a tile at any given time. A player may pick up a token from the tile they occupy. A player may trade cards or resources with another player that occupies that tile. And that's sort of any amount, but that, that action of trading costs the person who wants to initiate the trade one action uh, a player may spend resources to gain special effects from the tile they occupy downtime i'll go down to that right now so on this tile downtime these are all different things you can do so you can spend one food to any knowledge gun on the tile in the round after this action is doubled but this only comes that these only really come into effect on the clearing forest clearing and forest and uh hq um sort of after they've already been on right so after a tile's already been discovered then you can um sort of explore it and the reason i say that is that the first time you move on to a tile so some rules the first time a tile is moved on to the player automatically explores it as a free you get a free exploration of that tile the first time you move on to it so any of the downtime stuff you don't get to do on the first time so it's not like you can sort of gain the system but when you re-explore the tile, I believe it's like in the, the action is called investigate or something like that. Um, then these downtime things will benefit, right? So you can spend, you can, you know, spend food to gain knowledge from the, so any knowledge you get from the tile is doubled. But you also have to spend whatever it is to, to, to explore that tile again out of your own pocket, if you will. But these can all still be done. So you can even rest resting kind of resting and hunting are beneficial that's it look around spend two knowledge to re-explore this tile 
Um, so, um, resting and hunting are really the only things that you do on a tile um, that you've already explored a majority of the time. Um, unless you have something which I'm going to get into later. And again, this sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Because I'll show you the gameplay loop, and it's it's pretty straightforward. Especially, like, once you get the rhythm of it. Um, and then, uh, any actions required, blah, 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 uh, downtime, we just talked about downtime. Uh, you may spend five knowledge to draw and place a special tile in an adjacent empty space. That's called explore. Uh, these are the special tiles here. Uh, they're going to be named at some point, but, like, this is the McFinnigan place. This is the cabin, this is the shack, this is the pond, that's the mine, and that's the, well, this one's obviously named, but this is the layer, and the layer has a, its own special thing in here. So you've got special tiles, but you've also got the layer tile right there. Um, so spend five knowledge to place it, basically all of your knowledge to find a unique spot. Uh, the benefit of unique spots is that when rolling on them, they give you advantages, like certain benefits and stuff. A player occupying a space that corresponds to two or more tracker tokens may remove that tr two tracker tokens to re-roll on that tile. So this is another way that you can re-roll on a tile you've already been to. So there are things that will allow you to place these tracker tokens. And I'll get into, like, corresponding tracker tokens. But, like, these... It's kind of like Minesweeper. So these two would point to here. So if this wasn't the HQ, you could you could just get rid of these two, and you'd be able to re-roll on that. But those give you benefits in a lot of different ways. Tracker tokens are a really strong uh, resource for the players to use. Um, so that's called investigate. Basically, you're investigating the the information that you've gathered by the trackers. A player may discard a sensor token from their tile to gain three knowledge. That just gets rid of the sensor token outright. And the reason it matters is because sensor tokens that are on one of those corresponding spaces. So like what I was saying, like this. And then like this. That would make this space a corresponding space. So this sensor token here, like that. Um, rather than picking it up, but to... Ch uh, to um, Sorry. To check it without this, so let's say these weren't here. If you check that, that gets rid of it. Um, and you gain three knowledge. But the benefit is, is if these all, if this is set up kind of like this, you can get rid of all of them. And, um, and what that'll do is everybody will get uh, three knowledge. So it's like you, do you want it personally or do you want to wait to try and, uh, line things up and again I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll get to the details of that later um, so yeah you can also check a trap which will give you food uh, a player may reduce their food by one to gain one stamina so you can basically eat food but if you haven't if you've already stopped and looked at all the rules sorry my mic turned off if you've already stopped and looked at all the rules the if you have no food, if you look up at end round slash nightfall, you lose hit points every night you don't have food. So using food to get more stamina, yeah, you can do a lot more early on. It's like a high risk, high reward kind of a situation with eating. And then you can spend a material to build from your um, uh, from your inventory. So you see crafting cost one, crafting cost one, crafting cost one down here at the the bottom here that's the amount of material you have to spend so you'd have to spend one stamina and one material which is the brown die uh to uh to build that and then it would be come equipped at that point um so once you've performed an action whatever it is and you've run out of actions to do then you'd move on to the night phase right if you're not on the hq tile you remove one food from your inventory uh, on the HQ tile, you never have to worry about losing food or losing health until the HQ is gone. Uh, players are remove one material from their inventory uh, to regain one vitality. So that's basically like you're making a campfire. Um, though I forget 
that rule ever exists, but it exists for a reason, which is to make it to where you don't just like die right out from making really, really, really poor choices. Or if like you choose a character who starts with only one, uh, like two food, and you didn't find any food, and you're like deep into the forest, like you won't just like you won't like lose four hit points before getting back to HQ, and then if you happen to get into an encounter with the monster, it kills you outright because you were just just bad luck, you know, bad rules, bad luck. That that's just to sort of extend out your time. Uh, so you regain one vitality, uh, but you'll lose two, and that that's this is sort of the order it happens. And you can remove one material to gain one vitality. Uh, when you do that, though, right after that. So if you're at like max hit points, you're still gonna lose two hit points. If you're if you go back up to max hit points, you're still gonna lose one hit point. So you you always lose health on uh the nighttime phase if you don't have any food it's a punishment to make sure that you're uh managing your resources because it's not just a hunting game it's also a survival game right it's you versus the monster um and the and the and then you versus the wilderness <clears throat> uh there's also uh some characters have a nighttime effect like the deputy has a nighttime effect which is if if another player occupies the space he has and he has his flashlight, which he starts with a flashlight, all the players on that tile can use his flashlight as if it's theirs. And then everybody resets the stam their stamina counters and then because they they slept through the night and then for every player on the HQ tile, the HQ gets one to one to the night die. And the reason why is I don't want people camping the HQ uh, as the nights increase. You have a higher chance of getting an encounter card when trying to uh, gain knowledge on the um, the HQ, which is the HQ is a great place to gain knowledge. As you can see, it's also a great place to gain ammo. I might um, put a a food option on here as well, and the only reason I say that is so that it entices people to um, to roll because rolling is. Um, the thing I want people to do on the HQ because no matter what you do on here whether you're just gathering materials or whatever else it's still gonna cost you two uh, stamina it requires two stamina for many actions on the HQ um, that's not like moving or anything so that's that's a bit of a misnomer I need to label it any any downtime I mean it's implied there but I should say requires any to perform any downtime actions on the HQ anyway the nighttime phase, yeah, and then it just kind of resets from there. I mean, I guess I could go over these rules really quick just so I can show you the gameplay cycle so I don't have to worry about that. First time a tile is moved on to, like I was saying, it automatically explores. When rolling to explore a tile, players may spend their knowledge to change the die result. So this red knowledge die here, right, if you've, if you've got only one on it, you can only add or minus one to your result. Pretty straightforward. The number of tracker tokens available to players is one plus plus the number of players, so I'm playing by myself, so I'll only have two tracker tokens, but it only goes up to a max of four. There are, I plan to have some characters in, in later versions of the game, sort of, uh, sort of expansions to the game, that might play with uh, tracker tokens a little bit differently, like maybe they get just two tracker tokens to place however they want, or, or there's another character I'm thinking about where he gets to flip a tracker token, and that tracker token gets to be placed whatever it faces on the tile that he's on. Um, but I don't want to spoil anything. Um, uh, characters' abilities are that are in effect, like I was saying, um, with the whole, like, uh, him getting two times the ammo. The hunter getting two times the ammo, that's just a passive ability. It doesn't going to cost you any stamina. Uh, characters occupying the same tile can use each other's resources. So if you two people are traveling together, let's say, you're not going to be able to explore much space, get as much stuff. But if one person's got a lot of food and the other person's got a lot of ammo, you guys can sort of travel together and sort of use each other's resources to stay alive longer. Um, and the reason why is down here on the monster slash player win conditions. I'll get there. Um, when discarding tracker tokens to investigate, the knowledge needed to change the result is two to one. So, um, so when spending that knowledge, right? So when spending one point to make it from a roll of five to a roll of six, uh, instead you go from a roll of five to a roll of seven. So 
the rolls, like it says here, roll is three, you want seven, usually you need to spend four, because that's the difference, but instead you'd only need to spend two, because two, four, and then you get your four that you need. Uh, when in an encounter, the monster's effects take place before the player effects, so you can die before dealing damage. Uh, so if you get a fight, you know, it says lose this much vitality and then the players do this much damage. Uh, if you die, you don't get to do dam I guess I think that's the, one of the next things. Um, is it... Yeah, down there, characters who have died in an encounter cannot deal damage. I know it seems obvious, but just to be, cl just to be clear and concise. Uh, all players on a tile experiencing encounter, excluding nighttime encounters, take the full effects from the monster's actions. Um, all players on the tile experiencing encounter, including night encounters, deal damage to the monster's vitality. So, um, the monster hurts everybody the same, but the monster gets hurt by everybody that's on the tile as long as they're alive. Um, if a trap token is on, this is where I was talking about the corresponding, um, tracker tokens. If the trap token is on a tile where corresponding, uh, the corresponding tiles... Sorry, all three tokens can be removed. Monster loses three vitality. So if you look down at the picture at the bottom, uh, all the yellow highlighted squares, this is four people playing, so there's four tracker tokens. All the highlighted, yellow highlighted hexagons are corresponding tiles. And you can see where the arrows are pointing to see how they're corresponding. So if we look at the HQ, right, we only have to remove two of the three that point to the HQ. And however you want to do that, that's up to you. But only two of the of those that point to it need to be discarded. Um, and if there was a trap token on it, um, but I might have to specify you can't really put trap tokens on the HQ. But let's just say, for argument's sake, trap token is pointing to that. Okay. Um, you can discard the trap token and those two tracker tokens like what I was saying about the sensors earlier, and the monster will lose three hit points. Same with the sensor, everybody gains three if there's a sensor, like what I was saying. If the monster vitality drops to zero through an encounter, you you kill the monster, and the players win. If the monster's vitality drops to zero through a tap, trap token, you've trapped the monster, and the players win. If you trap the monster um, in, the, in the legacy version, you're going to be able to get things for your next adventure. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to play that out, but basically, as of right now, it's just that haha, fucking big dick mode, you trap the monster. If a player runs out of tiles before the monster is stopped. So if you have no more tiles to play, remember how I was saying it only fits in so much big area? Um, the monster escapes. And it wins. Uh, if all the players are dead, also, if the monster kills all the players, the, the monster wins. You may only have two items and one weapon equipped unless otherwise stated. So like... The hunter gets an extra weapon, and muscles gets an extra equipment card. Players may discard items at any time. You don't, you're not required to hold on to anything. You can just get rid of it. You don't get anything for it, but you can just get rid of it. So if you wanna, like, you don't like what you have in hand, and you only have a max hand size of five, you can discard something from your hand, and uh, draw another one. Or let's say you want to equip something, like you want to build and equip something, you can just chuck whatever item you have equipped. Let's say you have like, you know the flashlight equipped and you want to put on hiking boots you can just huck the f hiking boots i mean not the hiking boots you can just huck the flashlight but you still have to build the hiking boots with an action and a resource and a material but you can just huck the the flashlight to get it out of there monsters activities determined by the monster you're fighting that's what i was talking about about the corpse guards and all that and then uh the number of monsters activity is added to the player's search so when i was saying like you uh when you move on to here and you roll, so if you look at clearing tile, it says one, you find nothing of use, two to six discovery cards, seven to nine is add one food to your inventory, uh, 10 is add one material, and 11 is draw an encounter card and resolve it. So, um, if the monster's activity is increased by one, you will always at least draw a discovery card. You can never find nothing of use if the monster's activity is at one. But if the monster monster activity is at eight, there's a good chance you're gonna be rolling 10, you know, like 11s and getting encounters, which is how the monster gets more aggressive. So, and then and then this just goes on to explain the ratio. So clearings are better to find discoveries on, very hard to get encounters on, and you, there's less room to get food and materials on. Whereas like a forest, not as much discovery, you don't find as much, but a lot of food and a lot of materials in the forest and a, lot, a higher, ch slightly higher chance of getting encounters. You saw the headquarters tile earlier. 
doesn't really play in unless you're trying to grind the the hq which has its merits uh layer tile right so uh one to four roll a knowledge counter gain that amount of knowledge so when you went onto the layer tile not also nothing can be placed on this tile you may only reroll this tile by discarding tracker tokens you can't really do anything on this tile besides either fight the monster which has the highest chance of fighting the monster seven to ten roll any one of your resource dice so ammo material or food and gain the results to your inventory so i'm at two if i roll the five i'd have seven but you can't have seven you can't put any uh, materials down on the tile to like store it so your best chance is that you bring somebody with you special tiles uh take advantage this is like downtime but except for take advantage allows you to do actions before you roll so when you first move onto a tile and you get a free roll on it you get to do actions before you get that free roll on a special tile only same with the uh layer tile you can only re-roll this by using tracker tokens uh ready yourself you spend one ammo deal two more damage in the encounter so plus two to damage uh reinforce spend one material you must subtract two from your roll so all that's going to do is basically unless the monster's activity is really high um you're just basically going to guarantee you don't get an encounter on this space so you're going to spend it to get food or materials because this one you see you get more food more materials or more ammo than you'd usually get um cook you spend one food and you recover vi two vitality so it's pretty good but this one is also going to increase the chance of an encounter. So if you really want to have an encounter on a special tile, um, you do that. You know what I mean? And inspect, you spend one knowledge and gain double the rewards of whatever it is. So you can inspect and then you can ins inspect and reinforce, and you're almost going to guarantee that you get two food or uh, two material or, or, I mean, not two food, uh, four food, four material, or four ammo. Or whatever you get off your discovery card, which could be ammo or knowledge or whatever it is, is also going to be doubled. So special tiles have a great value for sort of gr like just chunking out resources. And it's really great to sort of explore them together. Um, this is how the activities work for the monsters. Uh, the werewolf, I really like the idea, but I haven't got there yet. Um, you know, basically, uh, it's it's. Uh, the, the special things to know about this is it just rotates clockwise. Um, and then, as you can see, clockwise. Uh, it does increase when you find a corpse, but it only for the round that you, the corpse is found on. Um, which means that you still can't have encounters in the negative area. So negative two and negative four, you're, you're not, you cannot get an encounter, except for maybe on the layer tile. Uh... Because what's that like seven, eight, nine, and ten? So if we increase it by, let's say you found two bodies, you would have a chance, but you'd really need to roll like an eight or a nine, I think, to get it. So that's still, yeah, I might make it negative six. Anyway, not my point. Uh, that's basically all the rules. Um, I will like make a temp save file here because um, I do have other stuff to do. So when I get able to come back, I'm going to do like a part two. I might just stitch it together. I don't know. All right. So I shall see you again.